one, one the, Real quick on concealed carry. Oh, the, the real issue is is who makes the decision on whether you're getting a concealed carry permit. And, and the real difference between states are those where it's a shall issue or versus may issue. And a, a lot of states is, is the Can chief you, you have to out. explain what shall and, and may and, means. Yeah, I was going to do that. Shall issue states, uh, it basically someone fills out a form. Sometimes they don't have to take a class. Uh, a lot of times in Utah, they don't even have to live in the state. Um, sometimes you can just send in a form that says, yes, I listened to a video or whatever, and send, here's my check, and you get a concealed carry permit. In other states, it actually goes to the chief of police or to the sheriff who does a check to see whether you, not only is your record clean, but and in terms of the felony uh, conviction, but they check to see is the police responding to your house every week and because of domestic quarrels, is this a kid that uh, you've had to arrest a number of times on minor things that aren't going to be a disqualifier. Then the police have some discretion. I had a police chief who turned down somebody for a gun because he had a clean record. Turns out the kid had uh, been acquitted of killing his parents in a, in a neighboring county five years earlier. Um, it was questionable whether he should have been acquitted. It was one of those cases. Um, my chief turned him down a few years later when it was, uh, it was easier to get those, uh, those guns. He ended up killing his brother, brother-in-law, neighbor with, uh, with one of his 25 AK-47s that he kept in the attic. So it's, it's give the police a little more discretion on who's getting these guns. Right now, 48 of the 50 states have some version of, of, of either may issue or shall issue, so it's hard to make comparisons between states that do and don't have these let's, things. Let's bring Chief Kerlikowski also to address the gun buyback question. I, I, well, I think the issue for us is clearly that there has to be far more than being mobile and not being blind as a reason to give someone a, a firearms permit. And just within the last several months at one of the largest festivals in the, in the city, the Folk Life Festivals, tens of thousands of people and literally dozens of police officers, officers within spitting distance, in fact, of the crowd, a young man who had been on methadone, who had had a number of other problems, had a license issued by the sheriff in a neighboring county so that he could carry a concealed firearm any, anywhere. And in the middle of this crowd, he looked at someone, that person looked at him, and they got into a fight. The gun went off and it not only discharged across the assailant, the person that he was fighting with, and all they'd been fighting with were their hands. The gun also then uh, ended up uh, going through the hand of a, of a young man and into the thigh of another woman. That is a person that should have never had a concealed firearms permit. On the issue of gun buybacks, I think the research is pretty clear. Does it deter crime? Does it result in guns being taken off the street that are crime guns? A lot of times they're old guns, they're uh, guns that uh, are not being used in crimes and they're being found by people cleaning out uh, garages, etc. Taking those guns off the street is not a bad thing. Remember, a hundred-year-old firearm can, can kill someone, but uh, I don't think generally we see it as a huge issue as far as uh, reducing crime. John Lott. On the gun buyback issue, I don't know of one single academic study by any type of academic that finds that they reduce any type of violent crime rate. We could talk about that more if you want to, but one question that keeps on coming up here, a point from the other side, is that people with concealed handgun permits, they may do bad things. And the, it's easy to check. In the state of Washington, you've had permits being issued since 1960. Uh, and the type of incident where there was this wounding is the only case I know like that in the state of Washington. Nobody has been convicted of murder, for example, in Washington that's had a concealed carry permit, and you're talking about almost 50 years. And you see that in state after state. In Florida, you can go to the website for the department that issues permits, and they have detailed data there. You find that from October 1987 through uh, September 31st of this year, they had issued over 1.41 million per permits to 1.41 million people. Of those people, 166 had had their permits revoked for any type of fire violation, firearms violation. Virtually all of those were for one type of violation that was someone who accidentally carried a concealed handgun into a gun-free zone, like an airport or what it's have you. It, it's, it's interesting that yeah. uh, this is Paul Helmke. It's interesting that, that Florida's brought up, though, this, uh, the, 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 sun, the, the Sun Sentinel did a study in, in 2006 before the legislature closed off this website. This is the new move, by the way, is that uh, 
is that the gun pushers come in and they say that we don't want this information to be public because we don't want you to know uh, what's happening with uh, the concealed com uh, carry permit holders. But the Sun Sentinel found 216 people with active warrants, 128 with domestic violence restraining orders, nine people charged with felonies or, reckless, or violent reckless misdemeanors, six re registered sex offenders, at least one prison inmate, and another 1,400 people who had pled guilty or no contest to felony charges all had concealed carry permits in the state of Florida. And then, and then the Florida legislature said, we don't want to make this information public anymore. Gary Kleck says that Paul Hemke notice, is leaving something out. what Paul is leaving out of that. You may have been listening for, well, how many people um, did something with their gun that they are now legally entitled to carry around in public places? How many times did they commit a violent crime in a public place? That's the only thing a carry permit allows you to do that you couldn't do without the permit. In but fact, none of those people did a violent crime with a gun in a public place, and the fact that they had carry permits had absolutely nothing to do with anything. There We're was, no, go back there to was no harmful the consequence of them getting those, those carry permits.